Today I'd like to give you an approach to the major causes of microcytic anemia and I'm not going to go into deep detail about every cause or how you distinguish them from an another but rather give you a quick overview about how to think about microcytic anemia and hopefully a way to remember the causes much more easily. So just as a quick recap, microcytic anemia, what does that mean? Well, the word micro means small, cytic or cytos would refer to cells and in this case refer to red blood cells. So microcytic anemia usually means that there is an anemia that is characterized by small red blood cells. And how do we define these small red blood cells? Well, we can do the mean cell volume, which is normally between 80 and 96. Some would just remember between 80 and 100 to make it easy in adults, of course. And when the MCV in adults is less than 80 femtoliter, that would usually constitute microcytosis. Another way to define microcytosis would be to look at the red blood cells on a peripheral blood smear. And if we take the diameter of one red blood cell, such as this one here, we just measure the diameter there and we compare that to the diameter of the nucleus of a small lymphocyte. We can see that the diameter of this cell is quite a bit smaller than that here. In normal people, they should be more or less the same. And if it is smaller, that would indicate microcytosis. So microcytic anemia is usually characterized by one important thing, and that is a decrease in the amount of hemoglobin. Now, if you know that the cause is a decrease in hemoglobin, one just has to go back and look at what constitutes, what makes up hemoglobin and then it is a whole lot easier to determine or to remember the different causes. So let's quickly look at that. If we go back and we think of hemoglobin being made up of heme, which is a protoporphyrin ring that contains iron, globin, there are four glo globin chains, two alpha and two beta, and then we have of course, iron and protoporphyrin making up the iron protoporphyrin ring that is heme. So if we take it from the left, let's just start with iron. So if we have a deficiency of iron, so let's say iron deficiency anemia, that is the most common cause by far of a microcytic anemia. The second most common cause is so-called anemia of inflammation also sometimes known as anemia of chronic disease. Now please note that most patients with anemia of inflammation actually have a normocytic anemia. They are not microcytic. But somewhere between 20 and 40% of these patients can actually develop a microcytic anemia. Why do I classify this under iron? Well, anemia of an inflammation has a problem whereby there is decreased iron absorption from the gut, but there's also decreased iron uptake from recycled red cells in macrophages or from other organs. So it also leads to what we would call iron restrictions, whereas iron deficiency, of course, is a deficiency. So patients with anemia of inflammation may have enough iron, but they can't get the iron to the bone marrow, to the factory where red blood cells are made. A rarer cause under here would be copper deficiency because copper deficiency um, can also lead to problems in terms of iron absorption and iron redistribution. So it's a much a rarer cause, but something to remember, especially in patients who may have had um, surgery to their gut and have problems with copper absorption, often with bariatric surgery for obesity and these things, you can develop this. If we move to protoporphyrin, the group of diseases that are most important here would be the so-called sideroblastic anemias. And here you have to concentrate a little bit because there are some important exceptions here. So these sideroblastic anemias can be congenital or acquired, and the acquired forms can be due to, for instance, myelodysplastic syndrome. Um, alcohol would be an important one, especially in other in al alcoholic patients with folate deficiency and malnutrition. They often get this as well. Certain drugs or medications. I'm thinking of TB drugs like isoniazid or cycloserine, chloramphenicol, linezolid. Again, copper deficiency appears here. Copper deficiency because some of the enzymes involved in heme synthesis are dependent on copper, so you can have problems there. Another interesting one is hypothermia, because if body temperature goes 
too low, some of the enzymes in heme synthesis stops working, or at least not working properly. And then one that is often mentioned here is lead poisoning. Now note that this one is a bit controversial because some studies have shown that you actually do not see any sideroblasts in this condition, but some books classify it under the sideroblastic anemias, but it would actually, you would say this is a sideroblastic anemia without sideroblasts. I think the important thing is just to remember that lead poisoning can be a cause of microcytosis as it affects protoporphyrin and heme synthesis because it inhibits a whole range of enzymes. Now I said that we should remember something important here and that is that some of the, these conditions, especially some of the congenital sideroblastic anemias as well as MDS, often have a normal or even a high MCV. So these conditions do not all have a microcytosis, but when you see a microcytosis, you need to think of the sideroblastic anemias at least. So these were the ones that causes problems in heme synthesis. What about globin? Well, problems with globin chain synthesis is most commonly due to these thalassemias. So there are a whole range of different thalassemias, alpha, beta, and others. And the thalassemias are the most important group that that affect globin synthesis and actually if you think about the minor thalassemias they would be probably number three on the list of causes of microcytosis. So this is a very simple overview of the causes of microcytic anemia. A very nice article published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2014 that I think you may enjoy. I've left the reference there but keep this approach in mind and it will help you when you buy the bedside of the patient to hopefully have a broad overview of what the possible causes could be.